Okay, welcome back, kiddos. Now we're starting Unit 6, so 6.1, talking about special segments. So our essential question is, what conjectures can you make given special segments in a triangle? Okay, so that's what we're going to be able to tell uh, by the end of the day today. So let's go ahead and uh, look at our first vocabulary word, angle bisectors. Let's go ahead and highlight this uh, angle bisectors. It's something we need to recognize. Okay, and so let's go ahead and write our explanation for angle bisector. So remember, bi means two, and sector meaning like section. So it is a segment that divides, as you might think, it's bisecting an angle. So it divides an angle into two smaller equal angles okay so it's going to divide an angle into two smaller equal angles okay so let's take a look at this one right over here okay it says segment bd bisects angle abc okay that's our information that's what we read bd bisects abc so let's take a look at bd this is bd right over here so bd we're talking about this right here Okay, is bisecting this angle A, B, C. So from A to B to C. Okay, so it's bisecting it. So it's d dividing it into two equal parts. They want us to find X. Well, what we find out with an angle bisector, okay, here's what we need to take away from that. Okay, what we need to know is it creates proportional segments. Okay, it creates proportional segments. So imagine like this. So imagine we have uh, this one triangle right over here. And imagine we have a different triangle over here. Right? So this makes, this divides into two segments. So then we're going to say the proportion of X to 7. Okay, let's make a proportion. Okay, so we said we're going to create proportional segments. We're going to say X to 7 is proportional with this and this. 14 and 6. So which one would go on top? Well, to be corresponding, if I use this side for X, I need to use this side for this side. So I'm going to put 14 up there, and then I'm going to put 6 over here. Okay, so once we set up our proportion, we just remember that we cross multiply, right? So we're going to say 6 times X, which is 6X, equals 7 times 14, which is 98. Whoa. 98. Okay, now let's look at our answer uh, result though. It says round to the nearest tenth. So we remember that tenth means one decimal place. Okay, um, so one decimal place, okay, uh, after. Okay, so after, let's put that after one decimal. Okay, so uh, let's look over here. So we know that 6x divided by, uh, equals 98. So our last step is to be divide. So we're going to divide that by 6, divide that by 6. So it cancels out. So let's go ahead and put that into our calculator. So let's go ahead and put 98. Type this in with me, please. 98 divided by 6. And we notice that we get a repeating decimal. Okay, so we don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and um, check and see. Now, uh, it says, if we push that, they would give a fraction, but they don't want a fraction. It says round to the nearest tenth, so we said one decimal place. So let's go ahead and put that X is approximately 16 point. Now, since we want one, let's go ahead and put four down. So three, 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 three. Okay, so since we want one, you do four. But since we want that one, we look to this one right here to ask us what do we do with that, right? So our answer is going to be X is approximately, no, it's going to be 16 point. So what does the three tell us to do with this three? Four or more raise the score. Uh, five or more raise the score, I'm sorry. Four or less, let it rest. So since three is less than, is four or less, we're going to let that rest. So it's going to be approximately 16.3. So that's going to be our answer. Okay, so whenever we have an angle bisector, okay, so it says this segment bisects this. So once we see this, right, this tells us that this angle 
and this angle are equal to each other. Okay, once we do that, we know that it bisects it, and then we know that those are proportional. Okay, so given that information, I want you to go ahead and try this one on your own. Okay, so let's take a look. It says, this is our information, segment BD bisects ABC. So BD is this one right here. Okay, it says bisects ABC. ABC. So if it bisects it, then that tells us that this angle is equal to this angle, right? Let's try a different color. Okay, so that means that this angle right over here, right, is equal to this. If this is a bis bisector, right? So if it's a bisector, that means that we are proportional. Okay, so if we're proportional, let's go ahead and set up our two proportions. So we're going to say uh, 19 and 11. So 19 and 11 is proportional with X and 13, right? Because we have those two triangles right there. So what's going to uh, what's going to go on top? Well, if 19 is over here, that means X is going to be on top, and we're going to have 11 right there. Now let's just do our cross multiplication. Okay, so we're going to just do. Uh, I like working with my variables first. So X times 11 just gives us 11X, right? 11 times 19. Um, Uh, 13, right? That's supposed to be 13. 19 times 13, right? So let's go and put that in your calculator. So 19 times 13. So 19 times 13. That's going to give us 247. Okay, so we know our last step is going to be divide. Right, so we're going to divide that by 11. We're going to divide that by 11. It says to the nearest tenth. We know that it is one decimal place. So these 11s cancel out. X is approximately. Let's go and type that in. 247 divided by 11. So we're going to say 247 divided by 11. Okay, now we want one decimal place, right? So let's put down 4. So 22.4545. Okay, 22.4545. Okay, but uh, we said we want to round, so we know our answer is going to be 22 point. Uh, now, since we want one decimal place, we're going to look to that 5. What does that 5 tell us to do? So we're looking at that 5. It tells us to raise that 4. So our final answer is going to be 22.5. All right, so what I want you to do now is pause the video and type this answer in to your Desmos, uh, to your Delta Math, and then do um, these problems on your own. Okay. All right, next, medians. All right, so what do we know about medians? All right, medians are, as you might think, a median is like in the middle of the road, right? So a median is a segment. Uh, f formed from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Okay, so from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Okay, so let's take a look at this one right over here. It says segment BD is a median. Okay, so we said that it goes from the vertex. So this right over here is the vertex. Right, we remember that's uh, the, the corner. Right, so the vertex to the, this is the midpoint. Okay, so BD is that right there. All right, so says solve for x. So we're trying to find out what this is. Well, if this is the midpoint, what does the midpoint tell us? It tells us that this is the middle. That means this side is equal to this side, right? If you're in the middle of the street, that means the same distance is on the right side of you as the left. So that means that x equals 11. Okay, so just, that's our answer. Okay, so they're asking us how long is this? Well, if we understand that that's 11 and that's the uh, med median, that means it makes those into two equal parts. All right, so keeping that in mind, pause the video, and I want you to see if you can get this one on your own. Okay, so let's look at our information. It says BD bisects AC. 
So BD right over here bisects AC. So what do we know about these two? We know that this one is congruent with that, right? So these two are equal to each other. So if those are two equal to each other, that means X equals 8, right? Because this is the midpoint. Right? And we know that because it says that was the uh, bisector, and it bisects it. If it bisects it, it makes it into two equal parts. Okay, so what I want you to do now is pause the video and put these answers into Delta Math and do those pro uh, practice problems on your own. All right, next, so make sure that you did those practice problems in Delta Math before we move on to this. All right, next, angle bisector. Okay, so angle bisector, we talked about that. Our, uh, the angle bisector is a segment that divides an angle into two smaller equal angles, right? Well, now we have the theorem and its converse. So once we understand one thing one way and we understand it the other way, we say we can do it forwards and backwards. So if AD bisects BAC... Okay, so this right over here, if AD bisects BAC, right, and we know it bisects because this angle right here, right, is equal to this angle over here. It bisects BAC. If it bisects that and, okay, if it creates these perpendicular, remember that's what perpendicular means, perpendicular. Which, what does that mean? It means it crosses at 90 degrees, okay, at a 90 degree angle, okay, so if AD bisects this, uh, okay, if it bisects BAC, and if this and this are perpendicular, right, so if this makes a 90 degree angle, and that makes a 90 degree angle, then we know that this equals this. Okay, so if we know that, then we can tell it's not labeled, but we can say, okay, I know this is going to be equal to this. Okay, but now thinking of that, the converse. Converse says, okay, well, if I know that this and this are equal, and I know that this and this are perpendicular, then that tells me that these are equal angles. So that tells me that AD is a angle bisector okay so if i know this is an angle bisector which makes these two angle equal and i know these are perpendicular then i know that tells me that these two are equal if i start with these two being equal and i know those are perpendicular i know that's an angle bisector okay so keeping that in mind let's think about this it says find bd okay so bd is this right over here right wants to find that well what do we know if we look right over here, AD is an angle bisector, right? Because it makes these into two equal angles, right? That's what that arc means right there. This angle and this angle are equal. Well, if those are equal and if this is per perpendicular with that, that tells us, we said, that this and this are equal. So that we know that this and this are equal. Okay, so if we know that those are equal, we can set an equation and solve for x. So let's do that. 3x plus 1 equals 5x minus 1. 3x plus 1 equals 5x minus 1. So we wanted to figure out this problem. We thought, how can we set up that problem? And now we did it. So now we set it up. Let's just solve our problem right so let's get our x's together so we want to get the x's over here it's going to add the opposite the opposite of 5x is negative 5x and subtract over there subtract over there bring that down so 3 plus negative 5 gives us negative 2x okay bring down my plus 1 okay these two opposites cancel out i bring down my negative 1 all right so i'm very getting very close all right so i have my x's together but now i want to work with that last so i need to get this constant to the other side can't just move it i have to add the opposite opposite of positive 1 is minus 1 so i got to do that to both sides so working from left to right i'm going to bring down my negative 2x because these two opposites cancel out equals negative 1 minus 1 gives me negative 2 okay so now i'm down to my last step i know my last steps always divide divide by the number in front of the x so not 2 but negative 2 if i did that by my negative 2 i have to do that as well so x 
equals negative divided by negative gives us a positive. Anything divided by itself is 1. So our answer is x equals 1, but that's not our final answer, right? Our final answer is we want to find BD, okay? So BD, so we need to use that for this, right? So BD is equal to 3x plus 1. Okay, so what we're going to say is we're going to use, instead of uh, x, we're going to substitute our 1 that we found, right? That's what we're going to substitute right there. So our answer is going to be 3 times 1, which is 3 plus 1. So our answer is 4. Answer BD is 4. Okay? All right, so that's it. Make sure that you do our practice problems on our uh, delta math before we move on. All right, so now uh, let's talk about our uh, next part, which is perpendicular bisectors. So perpendicular bisectors, um, is, as you might think, perpendicular, uh, meaning that it crosses at a 90 degree angle. Okay, and then bisector, meaning bi means that it puts it into two equal parts. So it is a segment that crosses at 90 degrees through the midpoint. Okay, so it crosses at 90 degrees through the midpoint. So if we look right over here, if CP is the perpendicular bisector, right? That's what that means, perpendicular bisector. If CP is a perpendicular bisector, and we know it's perpendicular because we see that, then CA equals CB. So if this is perpendicular and it goes through there, that means um, this is going to be equal to this. Okay, so... If it's bisector, I already know that these two are equal, right? Because it's going to make it uh, bisected. And if that's perpendicular, then I know that these also have to be equal. Okay, now the converse. Converse means going the other way. Well, what if I said that that's perpendicular and that these two are equal? Okay, well, if those two are equal, that means that... Well, I'm sorry. If I know that these two are equal and those two are equal, uh, and that's perpendicular, then I know it actually bisects it. So if I know um, it's perpendicular and I know it bisects it, I know that these two are equal. If I know that these two are equal, I know it's perpendicular, then I know that these bisect. Or if I know this, those bisect, I know that has to be perpendicular. Okay, so that's the information that we get. So let's look over here. Uh, find A, B. Okay, well, let's look at the information we have. We know that's perpendicular. And if that's in 6 and that's 6, that means that that is the midpoint right so if that's the midpoint that means it's a perpendicular bisector right so it's perpendicular bisector okay so if it's a perpendicular bisector we said if these two are equal that means these two are equal so if this is nine if they want us to find a b which is this right over here this actually also has to be nine Okay, so let's take a look at this one, All right? Well, what do we know? We know these two are equal, and this is perpendicular. Okay, if this is equal to this, and that's perpendicular, that means that this has to be equal to that, right? That's what we said by that uh, reasoning right over here. Okay, so if we're trying to find SU, SU is this right over here. I don't know what SU is until I figure out what X is. Right, but we said this is equal to this, so let's make an equation, and then we can solve for it. That's our problem solving. We can say 2x plus 2 equals 3x, right? So now let's get our variables together. Let's think about this. I could subtract this and move over here, but now let's go to the next level. Let's think about this. Let's just move this over here, because I could move this over here, but then I have to move the 2 to the right side. How about I just move the... 2x over to the left. So I'm going to add the opposite. Opposite of 2x is negative 2x. I'm going to subtract 2x over there. Those cancel out. So 2 equals 3x minus 2x is just 1x. So that's my answer. x equals 2. But that's not our final 
uh, answer we're going to use that to find SU. Okay, so it says SU is 2x plus 2, right? So if x two, SU is 2x plus 2, that means that instead of the x, I'm going to substitute a 2. Right, that's what we found from right there. So that's what we're going to substitute and so that x plus 2. So that's going to be equal to 4 plus 2, which is going to be equal to 6. So SU equals 6. That's our final answer. All right, so let's take a look at these right over here. It says, tell whether the information in the diagram allows you to conclude point B lines on the perpendicular bisector angle bisector. Uh, all right, so... Um, Let's look at this. What do we know? That's perpendicular, and these two are equal, right? So if that's perpendicular and that's equal to that, that means it's this is the midpoint, right? So it says tell with the information to conclude uh, whether P is on a perpendicular bisector or on angle. So that's perpendicular and it bisects, so perpendicular bisector. All right, let's look at this one. All right, well, what do we know about this? Well, if this is perpendicular, right? If this equals this, that means this has to equal that, right? So that means that's the midpoint, so that means that it has to be a perpendicular bisector. Okay, then this last one right over here. Well, what do we know about this? Uh, P is on this. Well, what is that? Well... We said earlier, if this is, if this line, right, is going through here, uh, if this is equal to this, and it perpendicular here and perpendicular here, that means that this angle has to equal this angle. So that's an angle bisector. All right, so uh, make sure that you follow your examples on all these before we move on to our last part of the problem. Okay, now we're putting everything together. I know this is a lot of tricky stuff, but now we're putting it all together. Putting together that angle bisector, that median, um, and the perpendicular bisector into our last part. So when we're going to write the equation of a perpendicular bisector, so for given this problem, it says find the equation for a perpendicular bisector of a line segment whose endpoints are this and this. So there's a line segment that has these two endpoints, okay, and we want the equation of a line that bisects that. Okay, so if you can imagine that something like that, we want to find the equation of a line that bisects it. So this is what we're trying to find. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through our steps. All right, so our first step, it says uh, we're going to find the midpoint. So we said the midpoint, remember, is uh, we're going to do the x1 plus x2 divided by 2, right? And y1 plus y2 divided by 2, because that's going to be our middle of those two points. All right? we said our slope formula is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, we remember we said perpendicular slopes, the slopes are opposite reciprocals okay so we remember if um, opposite reciprocals so opposite means that we change the sign reciprocal means that we flip the fraction okay so instead of positive 1 over 4 we would say negative 4 over 1 which is actually just negative 4 Right, and then it said negative three. Pause the video, see if you can find that. What's the opposite reciprocal of negative three? Okay, well, if you put that over one, right, because we know it's the same thing, now that might make it a little easier. Instead of negative three over one, it's going to be positive one over three. Okay, so opposite reciprocal, opposite reciprocal. Okay, and then we're going to point slope formula. We talked about that. That's going to be y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. And we said our slope intercept form is when we have it in the form of y equals mx plus b. 
Okay, so let's put all that together. So it says find the equation of a perpendicular bisector whose line segment goes to these two endpoints. So step number one, we need to find the midpoint. Okay, so we said the midpoint uh, is going to add the x's and divide by 2. Okay, so we said uh, 7 plus negative 9 divide by 2. And then the y's, so negative 1 plus negative 5 divide by 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and put those into our calculator. Okay, so put our division button. So 7 plus negative 9, okay, going to go over 2. Okay, so that gives us our x value of negative 1. Okay, so now, remember we can't type that in at the same time, so we're going to do the next one. So divide, okay, so negative 1 plus negative 5, so negative 1 plus negative 5, all over 2. Okay, that gives us negative 3 for our y value. Okay, so that's our first part. We got our midpoint. Okay, so we're going to go and box that. That's what we're going to use going forward. Next, we're going to find our slope. Okay, so we need to uh, find the slope using these two points. So it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're going to say negative 5 minus negative 1 over negative 9 minus 7. Okay, so let's go ahead and type that into our calculator. Okay, so we said negative 5 minus negative 1 over negative 9 minus 7. Okay, so that gives us a uh, decimal, but we want a fraction. So let's go ahead and push that button right there. So 1 over 4. Okay, let's go ahead and box that as well. All right, so we're getting uh, really close. All right, so next we need to uh, find our perpendicular slope, right? So we don't want to use that slope. We want to use the perpendicular, so we said opposite reciprocal. So instead of 1 over 4, we're going to say that's going to be, instead of positive 1 over 4, it's going to be negative 4 over 1, which that's just the same as negative 4. Okay, so uh, now here's what we need to use. We need to use our... Uh, now we have our point that we're going to use and our new slope. Okay, so that's the stuff that we want to highlight. Now we're ready for um, our point slope formula. Okay, so remember that we're just going to substitute in our uh, point and our slope right there. All right, so number four, we're going to say it's going to be y minus our y value of our midpoint equals our slope our new slope of negative 4 times x minus our x value, which is negative 1. Okay. Uh, next, 5, we're just going to answer in slope-intercept form. So we're just going to solve for that. Okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to change that double uh, to a positive. right? So it's going to be y plus 3 equals. Now we're going to multiply that negative 4 times each of those items. right? So, oh, and let's go ahead and change that, actually. Let's go and change that double negative to a plus. Right, I'm just going to write on top of it so we know that, that double negative turns to a plus, right? So now we have negative 4 times x gives us negative 4x. Okay, now negative 4 times positive 1 is going to give us uh, negative 4, right? So now we're just going to uh, just do our simple math, right? So what we're going to do is we're getting very close. We just want to get our y value by itself, so we're going to... Um, do the opposite of positive 3. We're going to subtract 3. So we're going to subtract 3 there. I'm going to subtract 3 over here to keep it balanced. All right, working from left to right, these two opposites cancel out. I have y equals negative 4x. Now, negative 4 minus 3 is going to be more negative, so it's going to be negative 7. So that's our answer. All right, so this is uh, putting everything together. So when we write the equation, we'll go through those five steps. Find our midpoint four first, then our slope formula using the two points. Okay, then we're going to find our new slope using by finding the perpendicular. Then we're going to use that new slope and our new point from our midpoint into our point slope. And then we're going to put that into our equation. So a few steps, but definitely doable. All right, make sure you do our practice. Ask me if you have any questions, and uh, let's make it happen.